Hey, we've all been there before. You might have a customer who needs a little bit of extra hand-holding in your application that you've built. So for example, this application here, I look up there and I'm confused by the application as a customer. I click on this, this question mark up in the top right because I've seen that in other applications and I'm greeted with the Microsoft generic help section. Well, in this video, we're gonna show you all about how do you customize that to make your very own help section that'll be contextual based on what screen your customer's on and what section they're on. My name is Brian Knight and stay tuned to find out more about how to create your own custom help section. If you're interested in more content around the Power Platform, please visit our website to get a 40% discount off our annual subscription today. Use my promo code prag.works forward slash Brian40. All right, in this video, we're gonna show you all about creating your own custom help section. This is an old hidden feature in Model Driven Apps, and let's see how to use it now. So let's get that Model Driven app we, we saw a moment ago. What I wanna do is I wanna customize this help button right here to reflect what screen they're on and what they're currently doing to provide more guided assistance for that user. Our first step is to enable the feature in this environment. So I'll hit the gearbox in the top right and then go over to advanced settings. This is going to allow you to turn on the setting at all as a whole. Next, we'll hit the drop down box under settings and we'll go to administration. This is the back office side, the backstage area for Microsoft. We'll start by going to system settings. And as you scroll down, you'll see a collection of extra uh, radio boxes right here. With the bottom one underneath the section here called set custom help, we'll see one called enable custom help and guided task. I'll hit the yes button. Let me get my face so you can see the full thing there. So we turn this one setting right here on. Once you turn that setting on, we're ready to go. So I'll hit the okay button. Now that feature is on and available for my end users. I will then, if I'm an administrator, can go back to my application. I'll do a hard refresh, control refresh, control F5, whatever your preference is. And then once I do that, hit the gear button, hit this button again, and we'll see a brand new panel. This brand new panel is gonna allow you to customize this to, how, to your liking. So I'm gonna hit the little three dot here and click on edit. Now, in a low code environment, you can build out whatever type of code you wish to make it however you wish. You can do things like have little tool tips that pop up in certain areas. You can also have videos you implant and images you implant. In my case, we'll keep it simple for the purpose of this video here. So I'll create a new section right here. There we go. Oh. We'll go create a link here in this case. Actually, let me go before I do that, let me go ahead and start with a section. So I'll call this just intro to this section or something like that. All right, and we'll hit insert. So give us a new little section down below and in a WYSIWYG environment, we can start typing whatever we wish. So I'll put uh, this screen will help you diagnose which soup kitchens, kitchens, Oh, are producing, are handing out the most food, for example. Okay, we can then, of course, insert whatever images we want, whatever links we wish, and one of the cool things you can do are these balloons and the coach marks. Let's start with a balloon first. So I'll hit this little button here and say, uh, to view a report, click the visualize this view. I apologize for the spelling. We're going to ignore all my misspelling mistakes here and my grammatical mistakes. I'll highlight the visualize this view. Notice you have all the types of, you can actually see the HTML, you can put bolding and all those kind of things. But I'll go ahead and hit the uh, insert a balloon here. When I do that, it will actually go ahead and drag and drop this wherever I wish. I'm going to drag it right onto uh, certain areas. Notice certain areas here are not draggable, like these little, the, the, the uh, columns you see up top here. However, these buttons you see here, the command bar, as well as the drop down box here, all are, including any of the fields you have in your form. So when I drag in this on visualize a view, I'll give it a name, visualize a view, and I'll put some kind of descriptor like opens and ad hoc Power BI report, something like that, okay? I'll hit insert, and then I'll also do a coach mark. I'll show you what the difference is in a moment here. Uh, to change your view, click the view button here. All right, I'll go ahead and highlight that. I'll do a coach mark this time. And then I'll, it says a word here, I'll drag that right onto this drop down box. Notice it highlights it here for me. When I release, 
I'll then hit insert and then we're ready to go. Now, of course, you can put whatever else you want here, some videos, links, if you wish. You can also insert some images and other types of sections. You can also create your own sections below this and some bolded list here of point A, point B, and so on and so on. So make it kind of flushed out here. And then when I'm all done, I'll hit save. I typically also put my branding up top, so I'll insert an image of myself, uh, my, my company's logo, and all those kind of goodies in here. All right, now that I've done that, I can minimize this, go back to the question mark, it recognizes which page I'm on. Then we can go up top above me here, hit visualize a view. Oh, there we go. That's the piece we just put in there. We also can hit the change of view. I'm like, where the heck is that? When I click on that, it will kind of give it a little bing and show me where it's at. There we go. So we can kind of see the coach marks right there where I can change the views. The same thing applies also in your view you see here. So when I go back to the question mark here in this view, you'll notice it's a little empty. Hit the edit button, put in whatever. I, of course, I always start with section first. And then you'll notice here, as you do these types of things, the coach marks are a little more flexible. You can actually put it into any, any given section, any given like a, a beginning of a new field, for example. Uh, any field right this, for example. I'll just put like, you know, kitchen name. I recognize misspellings there, it's okay. You guys don't care about that right now, but then I'll go ahead and hit the kitchen name and we'll see it actually pops a little, little bing there also now. So these, we've had a lot of success with this normalizing, making it easier for your users to understand your model driven app. A few questions we always get asked, can this be brought into a solution? And yes, it can. It can be brought into a solution. You're gonna see that uh, if I go over to add existing, go under more, you're know, looking for help here. I'll have to go other again, and then you're gonna see the help section inside of here. Now, additionally, there's your help page right there. It will have you point to it. Notice there's no titles on it, so you can rename those once you get them into the system though. I know these are my two help section, and now that will be transported with the rest of my solution as I migrate from dev to QA to prod. The other question I get asked is, hey, does this work on a Canvas app? At this time, it does not work on a Canvas app. It only works on a model-driven app. Your good options there are to actually put that help embedded into your Canvas app by putting question marks or info boxes throughout your application. So in this video, we showed you how to go deeper and, and really hold the hand of your customer. If you have a, a bunch of sales folks, for example, or people that may not be as technical as you, this is a great way of humanizing your, your model-driven application and making it where anybody can use your application. Thanks for watching this video and please do subscribe to let us know that you want to see more videos like this about Power Apps. Have a great day.